LL Cool J is an acclaimed actor, musician, entrepreneur, and best-selling author. He's a two-time Grammy Award winner with 10 consecutive Platinum Plus selling albums. LL Cool J has received the NAACP Image Award, and he's the first rapper to receive a prestigious Kennedy Center honor. He currently stars in the hit CBS TV series NCIS Los Angeles and curates Sirius XM's LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Radio. He's both a passionate and avid philanthropist. Music icon, TV star, business mogul, trailblazer, husband, father, and now grandfather. Uh, in under 15 words, that pretty much sums up my next guest who really needs no introduction, but I just gave him one anyway. LL Cool J, welcome to the Yahoo Finance All Market Summit. Thanks, thanks for having me, Brian. How you doing? Good, good. It's good to uh, good to speak with you again. And and you know the the theme of our event is road to recovery. But for you, it's road to creating a business uh, during the pandemic. Tell us about Rock the Bells. Why'd you launch it, and what is it? I just felt like um, you know Rock the Bells was a, you know something that uh, a journey that I began about seven years ago. Um, I felt like uh, you know Sirius XM had a channel called Backspin, and I felt that although it was it was classic hip hop, it didn't really it didn't go deep enough into the culture and didn't really dig into the nuances of what it means to be, you know, a fan of classic hip hop. So, you know, I got with Scott Greenstein and, you know, over the course of five years convinced him to, uh, you know, let me take over the channel. Let me do something with it. Let me work with it. Um, I finally got the channel. Um, you know, you fast forward to now and we've kind of taken it from where it was to around, you know, 7 million listeners daily and people are really enjoying it. And what I discovered and what I learned is that, um, there are a lot of classic hip hop fans out there, Generation X fans out there who are being totally ignored. No one's really speaking to them. No one's talking to them. Generation X has, you know, twenty eight point what four point six trillion dollars. Um, a lot of those those that generation are hip hop fans and they've been completely ignored. So it's like, um, why not, you know, start a platform and systematically start speaking to these people through content, through through uh, commerce and through experiences. Um, not trying to boil the ocean at once, but you know, incrementally just systematically rolling it out. So um, now we're, you know, really focusing on content and getting heavy into that. And, um, you know, it's uh, we're speaking to the people uh, in a way that is kind of awakened this kind of sleeping fan base that was out there with no one speaking to them for, for many years. Oh, you think there's too much focus on millennials? Everywhere I go, consumer, big business focused on millennials. But you just said, I'm focused on Gen X. Well, you know, look, um, I think that Generation X has been completely, you know, ignored and written off. I mean, they're, they're a group that built, you know, hip hop. They're a, a generation that is rooted in a culture. They're a generation that really um, lives it and speaks it. You know, they'll pay for, you know, elevated experiences. I think that they're, you know, they're just a group that really loves and enjoys classic hip hop and no one has really saw the value in that. And they've just been sleep. So it's not, you know, in any way, you know, trying to like, you know, say anything uh, negative about the millennial um, generation, which is a cool generation as well. But I just feel Gen X is a generation that I completely understand and that has really been ignored for a long time. And, um, you know, rock the bells really, has the kind of content, commerce, and experiences that that generation loves. Um, and, you know, it, it, what's what's interesting about that is the dirty little secret is we over-index with Gen Z because of our connection to Gen X. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, believe it or not, there was life before Instagram, and I can attest to that too. And I recognize all the songs on the Rock Bell station on Sirius, that much is for sure. So talk to me, how do you, how do you launch a business during a pandemic when you can't necessarily get up and close and personal. You can't see them in a room. How do you how do you pull that off? Well, you know, look, luckily we were building a platform, right? It is a platform business. So, um, you know, obviously this was, you know, we were well into on our way to building this business far before the pandemic. It just so happened the way the timing worked out that we had, you know, we launched in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but because we're an online platform that helps us, it didn't affect our reach. We didn't start in the bricks and mortars area. So that was an advantage. Um, beyond that, it's really about just making sure that our stories and our narrative 
is we tell the right story to the people and that they get it. And people are responding. They love the station. They love what we're doing. And now it's just a matter of getting the people that love the station to understand that rockthebells.com is an extension of that. And, and it's a place where they can go to really experience classic hip hop in all its various um, facets and dimensions. And um, look, hip hop is an ego system. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we feel like we could touch a lot of parts of that. And that's what's happening. So and, and so the how is basically, you know, it's you know, we it's staging and execution, right? Like we we're, we're doing it. It's very staged. You know what I'm saying? We, we we're not trying to do it all at once. Um, we have a very clear way of how we're trying to roll things out. We're being very specific about that. But we also know that we have, you know, there is a flywheel there and between content, commerce and experiences. We can get that thing turning and uh, and, and get it rolling and build some momentum. And we have. And it's just a matter of time. Um, you know, rockthebells.com is, you know, really appealing. Rock the Bells is appealing to the fans in a big way. And we just got to keep doing what we're doing and be authentic while we're doing it and give the people what they want. You know, for there, there are a lot of struggling business out, businesses out there during the pandemic. If someone is watching this and they see, you know what, LL Cool J started a business from scratch. I want to do that. How do you know who to trust? I can imagine you have dealt with all sorts of people throughout your career. How do you know who to put your trust in? Well, you got to, you know, look, you got to look, you got to have faith and uh, you got to you got to go with your gut. I think gut instincts are an important tool in your toolbox, you know, using your intuition, using your instincts. And uh, if something is gnawing at you, don't ignore that voice inside of you. Don't ignore that small, still voice. You know, I don't have all the answers, but I just think that Rock the Bells um, can be something really cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I It is something really cool. And I feel like um you know, you have to do something that you're not only passionate about and that you can be the best at, but then you have to have the people around you that have the the, the skill set to operationalize what it is you're trying to do. Um, you know, Rock the Bells is not just about, you know, LL Cool J um, and my knowledge of, of classic hip hop. It's There's also people that I put people in positions who really understand the fundamentals of how to, you know, take this business from A to Z. You know, and, and that's what it's about. And then, you know, the chips are going to fall where they may, but we're going to do our best to give people something that we believe that that we totally believe in. And I'm going to put the right people in the right position so that we can operationalize the business and take it to the next level. What does that next level look like uh, in 2021? Well, I think, you know, look, we want to, you know, without divulging all of the plans, I think that, you know, having the Rock the Bells Festival out there, you know, having some great content um, offering some premium content. We have some great premium content stuff coming um, that we'll be announcing. And then, you know, having commerce drops, you know, drops that people can really get into and feel and, and really get excited about. So, you know, it's really about just, um, uh, you know, our plan is right. You know, the plan feels right. It, it, it's true. It's authentic. It's just about delivering. And we will. You know what I mean? We will. Let's switch gears here. We, uh, I can't believe it. we talked five months ago, about two weeks removed or three, about three weeks removed from uh, the killing of George Floyd. A lot of protests sweeping throughout the country. Now that you've had five months to, to digest what's happening in this country, what are some of your thoughts? Uh, I think that, you know, times like this, the country needs leadership. You know, I think leadership is, is, is key. I think that, um, you know, you can't, you know, see, you know, walk around with a hammer and see every problem as a nail when the country needs a heart surgery. I think that there is um, a real um, there's it, there's a time this country needs to really reflect. I think that um, this 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 period has been probably as disruptive as, you know, the 60s or even, you know, Reconstruction, right, that period right after the Civil War. I think that this has been, you know, between this, the civil rights era and now, those have been three periods that have been really, really um, just, you know, full of strife and, and tension. And, um, you know, we need leadership and we need people that, you know, I think it's important to have a person running the country who understands how to communicate with those who agree with him and those who don't agree with them. And, um, you know, that that that's. That's a that's a skill, but it's needed. Right. You have in order to be the president or, you know, to be the leader of something, you have to be able to deal with all sides um, and you have to be able to see the big picture um, and, and, and hear people out. And uh, I think that what we're dealing with now is a kind of like my way or the highway style that I, I don't think bodes well for 
uh, 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 the, 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 consi- the, the future unification of our country. You know, in order to keep the country unified, you have to hear everybody out and kind of inspire people. It's not about pounding people. And um, I think that's the issue. Oh, it sounds as though you're, you're looking for a change atop the White House. How could these leaders do a better job and address, uh, really, it's, it's, a, it's an extremely challenging situation in this country right now? Well, I think, look, I think empathy, right? Empathy is important. Um, understanding what people are going through. Um, when your only goal is to preserve a, a specific status quo or a specific um, power source or resource, that's a that's a tough way to go, right? You gotta you gotta empathize. You have a lot of citizens who feel a lot of different things, and are going through a lot of different things, and have a lot of dynamics, and everybody's dealing with it differently based on where they fit in this puzzle of America, right? So it's like we need a president, we need leaders with empathy. You have to have empathy. It doesn't mean that you can't be tough. It doesn't mean that you're going to be able to please everybody because you never will be able to. But it does mean that if you're going to um, in order for you to lead, you got to, you know, you got to embrace the entire country, man. Like that, that's part of it. You know what I'm saying? That just comes with the territory. You know, if you're going to be, you know, the president or a leader of a nation, you have to embrace all of the citizens. You know what I'm saying? In yeah. some shape or form and uh, at least hear them out. Do you think this is the most important election in your lifetime? I mean, you're a young guy, but uh, even still. I think I think every election is important. I think that obviously this is a, a definitely an inflection point for America. You know what I'm saying? I think it's an inflection point when you have, you know, su- Supreme Court, you know, being filled, going in different directions. You have, you know, um, you know, a lot of legislation being passed, um, you know, budgets being put in place that will affect, you know, generations to come. Yeah, it's it's a key. I mean, there's some 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 elections are not quite as important as others. And this is definitely an inflection point. I think, and I think America has to get it right. You know, um, these decisions have to come from a place of, you know, what's going to be best for the entire nation, you know, or at least the greatest percentage of the entire nation in the right way. You know, you want to be on the right side of history, right? Ella, have you ever publicly endorsed a candidate? Um, I mean, you know, in my life I have. I haven't, you know, said anything about who I'm voting for or anything like that. Um, Not really. um, But I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, the the way I'm leaning, you know what I'm saying? You know, just because I I just feel like things are too tense. I feel like there's too many, um, there's too much negativity being encouraged. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, people got to vote for who they want to vote for. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you know how I feel about it. I, I, I just, you know, I think we need a, we need a change. You know what I'm saying? What, what's, uh, what's music role right now? Well, I think, you know, it depends on who the musician is, right? And who the artist is. You know, hip hop, classic hip hop in general has always been at the forefront of, of, of the game. Always been at the forefront, you know what I'm saying? Always spoke to, um, the, to the issues of the day, you know what I'm saying? And always spoke from that place of, you know, from the place of an underdog. Um, and uh, I don't see that changing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Rock the Bells for for sure is you know supportive of you know uh, the, the 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 idea of you know supporting the underdog and lifting up you know the common man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you know um, music and art always speaks. You know, especially hip hop speaks to the current situation that's going on. And uh, it's about not forgetting where you come from and just remembering, right? Like a lot of times you get the celebrities and, you know, the celebs get a bad rap. They forget where they came from or, you know, get a, you know, get a couple of dollars, can get an extra sandwich. And people think that they can't relate. But I actually care about what's going on in the world and care about what's going on in the community and care about, you know, my people. And then I care about America as a whole. Um, you know, I want to see the right thing happen for the nation. You know what I'm saying? No, you can definitely, definitely tell. Uh, last time, last question before I let you go. I asked you this before. I'll ask it again. Any new music coming next year? Uh, you're yeah. signed to Def Jam. I had to ask you. I'm a fan, very much a fan. Your music is the soundtrack of my life. Anything my man, you could share? My man, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually working on a new, a new album. Me and Q-Tip are working on it. You know what I'm saying? And um, it, it's coming along crazy. I like it a lot. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Feels good. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think the people will be 
pleasantly, uh, I think they'll feel good when they hear it. You know what I'm saying? Well, now I really can't wait until 2021. Yeah. Hello, Cool J. Again, it's been a pleasure to speak with you throughout this year. Thank you so much for joining the Yahoo Finance All Market Summit. Be safe, be well, and we'll talk to you soon. Much love, man. Stay healthy. Peace and love, everybody. Peace.